Hi everyone and welcome back to Googie's Kitchen and if you are new here then hello and welcome. My name is Alexis and today I want to share with you how to make my delicious spicy mackerel fish cake. As I just mentioned, today I want to share with you how to make my delicious spicy mackerel fish cakes. Now I love this recipe because it is really easy to do and my husband and son love it because it's tasty, it is full of flavour. I have lots of spices in here which make the mackerel taste amazing. So I'm going to make this for dinner tonight and I thought I'd show you how to make it while I was doing it. So here is how to make my my spicy mackerel fish cakes. So the first thing I've done is I've put a large saucepan on a high heat and I've added water to the base um, and I'm just bringing it to the boil and what I'm going to do to this pan is I'm going to add one whole carrot um, that I've peeled and chopped into like I say half centimetre pieces so I'm going to put this into the saucepan. Um, in the recipe, it does say two large carrots, but that's um, simply because it's just Ted, Howard and I having this meal tonight. So I'm doing this for like two uh, adult portions and then one small portion, although he does tend to love these fish cakes. So yeah, so he'll probably have a bigger fish cake. But anyway, yeah, I'm doing this for like, I'm halving the, all the ingredients for this basically. So I'm just gonna leave the carrot to boil for a couple of minutes now. So the carrots have been boiling away nicely for about a minute or so now. And what I'm gonna do is just remove the lid. Sorry if there's loads of steam in your lens now. And I'm going to put on a colander over the top and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my mackerel fillets to that colander. So I'm going to put them uh, flesh side down. So I'm going to leave the skin facing up on the mackerel. And I'm going to steam the mackerel while I cook the carrots. So i just move that one over a little bit if I can. Oh, spilling everything here. So yeah. Just going to cook these mackerel fillets now. So the mackerel has been steaming away nicely for about a minute and I'm just going to remove it quickly and I'm going to put it onto a plate that I have already and then I'm going to add in my potatoes now. So I'm going to add in about 400 grams, maybe 500 grams of potatoes um, and I'm going to bring the pan to the boil again. Um, and as I said, I'm halving all the ingredients, so that would probably be about 800 grams if you were making this for four people. So I'm going to pop that back on now, and I'm going to leave this to cook for about five minutes. So what you want is the potato to be knife full, not fork full. You don't want it really soggy, you just want it to be able to fall off a knife. But I'll show you that in a moment. So I've just checked the potatoes and um, they're cooked now perfectly. Um, if I show you what I mean by knife fall is, if I can get one, um, is you put a knife in the potato and if it falls off easily then it's cooked. Hang on, let's see if I can get this big boy here. It did do it earlier, I promise. Hang on, here we go. Oh there you go, yep, yeah, it's falling off really nicely. They're still fairly hard but um, they're brilliant, yep, yeah, that's perfect. So when it falls off a knife really easily like that, they're cooked. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this from the heat and then I'm gonna cook up some leek. So I've got a large frying pan and I've put it onto a high heat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some oil to the base of that pan, like so, just about a teaspoon or two as I always do and then what I'm going to always do as well is I'm just going to spread the oil around the base of the pan until it's all evenly coated the base um, and this I think just helps with um, not having too much oil because some of it will come off on the plastic brush as well so yeah so I'm just going to leave this pan to heat up now so my pan has heated up nicely now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my leek to the base of that pan. I'm going to fry this until it starts to soften. 
And I've left my potatoes and my mackerel just to cool while I cook this off. And I'll go back to those in a moment, but I'm just gonna cook this for now. This recipe is on my blog, Googie's Kitchen Life as well, which I will link in the description box below, but don't worry, I'll also link the recipe in the description box below for you. But I now have over 700 recipes on my blog, which I'm really proud to say. So if you are interested in like healthy food, um, there's loads of it on there. There's vegan, there's vegetarian, there's meat eating dishes as well. I do desserts, um, smoothies, breakfast, you name it, it's probably on there. So please go check that out if you are interested. And as I said, I'm just gonna cook these now until they start to soften. So I've been frying the leeks for about three to five minutes now. I forgot to say that I actually just roughly chopped this leek. I think in the recipe I've said to thinly slice it, but I don't think my husband and son mind too much when there's big chunks of leek in the dinner. Um, they don't really notice in this, so slice it however you want is basically what I'm trying to say. But yes, my leeks have softened beautifully now. So what I am going to do is I am going to just turn the heat off and set these aside for a moment. And my mackerel cooked while my potatoes were cooking over the top. And all you really want with the mackerel is to make sure that the skin just comes off easily. So I'm just gonna pull a piece of this mackerel out. And um, if it all breaks up, don't worry, you want it all broken up basically, but you want the skin off as well. So just make sure you take the skin off. So I'm just breaking it up as I pull it out. So I'm just gonna break this. And also mackerel tends to have little pieces of bone in it as well. So any bone that you can try and pick out would be really helpful as well. Because um, little ones can choke on bone, can't they? But fingers crossed. There you go. I've got some big ones out there. So yeah, I'm just going to continue to pull the fish from the skin and make sure there's no bones, obvious big bones in here. So that's what I'm going to do now. So now I've pulled the fish from the skin and I've tried to make sure that there aren't too many bones in there as well. I'm now going to put the potatoes that I cooked earlier into my saucepan that I was using to cook them with. And then I'm going to add in the leeks as well. So now it's time to assemble um, the fish cakes. And this is my favorite bit, I love doing this. And then I'm gonna add in the mackerel as well. So all of the mackerel goes in. And then I'm gonna mash these together. I might use a bit of olive oil just to help me lubricate this a bit because it is quite tough to mash them, but you want it tough so that um, it, you're gonna bake it in the oven in a little while, so you need it to be a bit tougher than normal mash. Yeah, I'm gonna need to use a bit of olive oil in that actually. I'm only gonna use a little bit. And then I'm gonna mash again. So I'm gonna continue mashing these now for a little while. I'll come back in a minute. So this <clears throat> took a good five minutes to mash together, I have to say, but it's well worth the effort. Trust me, these are delicious. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my herbs and spices. So in this bowl, I have two teaspoons of garlic uh, granules. Garlic granules are really yummy if you don't want to use, if you don't want to peel and chop a garlic. I tend to use garlic granules, it's my lazy option. Then I have one teaspoon of turmeric. And these sorts of spices are great for you in winter as well. And then I have, <coughs> excuse me, one teaspoon of ginger as well. And then I have one teaspoon of cumin, uh, dry, dried ground cumin. And then I have one teaspoon of dried ground coriander as well. And then I have one teaspoon of cinnamon, just to spice sweeten things up a little. 
And then I have one teaspoon of dried mixed herbs as well, which is gonna go in there. And then I also have a handful of chopped coriander as well. So just one small handful of chopped coriander and that's all gonna go in as well. And I'm gonna continue mashing these in now. And I might add a bit of salt and pepper in a minute as well, just, just to give it a bit more flavour. So everything is mashed together beautifully now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some pepper and a little pinch of salt as well. So you add salt and pepper to your taste. I only like a little bit, um, but yeah. So, and then I'm just gonna mash that in as well. And that's the base of the fish cakes done. And now we're going to add the coating to the fish cakes. Right, so I've taken the masher out and I've tried to get everything off the masher as well. And I've split the mixture into four parts in the saucepan. And what I'm gonna try and do now is pick up the parts of the fish cake. Oh, there's a lovely big chunky bit of potato there. And these smell delicious as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll them in my flaxseed. Now in the original recipe, I actually put that you could roll them in egg and flour, brown rice flour and egg. Um, but, I was experimenting the other day and I've actually discovered it's so much easier just to do it like this because the potato is actually quite sticky. And the reason I use flaxseed is because it resembles um, breadcrumbs. So that's why I use it. And this one is a bag of flaxseed and I think it's got pumpkin seed in it. It's got goji berries as well. So it's a great one um, if, you're, if you like that sort of thing. Um, and it cooks just like breadcrumbs in the oven as well. So I'm really impressed with using flaxseed on things. I use it on quite, in quite a lot of my recipes now. And it's, um, it's a great, uh, I'll get my words out today at some point. It's a great substitute for bread. So I don't really like eating gluten-free bread either. I much prefer to find a substitute and this is one I found that is really great and resembles bread. So I'm really pleased with it um, and I'm just going to continue making these fish cakes now. I was going to say flapjacks. I'm really not good at getting my words out today, am I? Cool, I don't know what's wrong with me. But anyway, yes, I'm going to continue now. Um, and as I said, these are on my blog, Googie's Kitchen Life as well. So please go check that out. Um, in this bowl, I've actually put about 100 grams of, God, they're huge. I think I can probably do about five, actually, because Ted will only want a little one. So, yes, um, I've put about 100 grams of flaxseed, which is about enough. So if you wanted to make this for four, I would suggest using them, uh, using them. I would suggest putting in about 200 grams. So yeah, nearly done, nearly got all of it. So I've made five out of this, which is more than I actually wanted, but I can always freeze one before I cook them off. So I may do that because these are a great little treat for Ted as well. If mummy and daddy are going out one night, then he can have one of these. So this is a great one for the freezer and all the ingredients in this are freezable as well. So now I'm going to preheat the oven to 180 degrees and I'm just going to wait for this to heat up. So my fish cakes have been in the fridge for a good couple of hours now and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to transfer them to this baking tray. Um, the great thing about these fish cakes, as I mentioned earlier, is you can freeze them as well. So if you wanted to make these in advance for a meal and then freeze them and get them out the day before to defrost, then you can. Um, you can also make these the day before as well. So I've just transferred them to my baking tray. And my baking tray is from Pampered Chef and it's actually a baking stone. Um, the great thing about a stoneware is it absorbs the badness from the food and leaves the goodness. Uh, Pampered Chef, as I mentioned in lots of my videos, no longer exist in the UK, but I think they're still in the US and I'm sure you can find similar things like this on the internet as well. So yes, I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil to each one as well. So I just grabbed my olive oil 
and I'm just going to put a little bit on each fish cake. You don't need much, just a little. Oh, that was a bit too much there. I'm going to use some of that, I think, for this one. You have to kind of dab it on as well, because otherwise you knock off a lot of the flaxseed. Although it is delicious all crumbed as well, baked in the oven, it's really yummy. So I'm just going to dab that on Ted's one. So the little one is for Ted, and then I'm going to put that one in the fridge and have that tomorrow for my lunch, I think. And I'm just going to put these into the oven now for about 15 to 20 minutes, or until they've gone golden brown, basically. So my fish cakes are done, and they're looking a lovely golden brown colour right now. I can smell them, they smell so yummy as well. And I'm going to be serving these tonight with some homemade baked beans, so I'm really looking forward to that. So that's how you make my delicious spicy mackerel fish cakes. And as I just mentioned, we're going to be having these with homemade baked beans this evening. And that recipe I will link in the description box below, along with the spicy mackerel fish cake recipe too. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And please feel free to leave any comments below. Have you ever had mackerel fish cakes and have you had them like this i'd love to know and please don't forget to hit that subscribe button see you all soon bye